How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. My name is Gianluca and I'm a first year Canadian medical school student who could have swore that I was totally done with this whole MCAT thing about two years ago when I actually got my MCAT test back at this point. But lately what I've been trying to do is put out some videos aimed at trying to help other people out that are getting ready for the test right now. Now I hope that the other videos have been helpful so far. I'm going to go ahead and link them somewhere up here. But what I'm going to be doing today is taking an entire CARS passage and dissecting it, showing you guys exactly how I broke down the passages myself and how I went about answering the questions when I got a 131 on my own test. Now guys, please just keep in mind that CARS passages are a skill. Getting them done and getting the questions right is something that you need to work on every single day and that you see very slow and gradual improvement with over time. And I haven't done these passages in a very long time, so hopefully I don't get too many of them wrong here on camera. But what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys my method and how it worked for me back when I was studying. So everyone go ahead, grab some pens, some pencils, some highlighters, and I'll meet you on the Khan Academy. Let's do it. So before we get into the actual passage itself, what I wanted to show you first was how I kept track of my own notes as I was going through the passages. And you're free to do this however you want, but basically in my very simple table here, which gets very messy, especially as I start going through the passage, I have three different sections. On the left hand side, highlighted in purple, I keep track of which paragraph I'm currently reading. In the left column here, which is highlighted in orange, I have my memory anchors slash my quick notes. And this is basically things that I want to remember about the passage. And then finally, highlighted in yellow, I have my author insight column where I would just write down things or clues that the author has given me in terms of how they feel about the particular subject that they're talking about. Now what's very important is that you don't fall into the trap of taking too many notes. A lot of times you don't actually even come back to read your notes but having a general layout, something to keep track of your ideas as you're reading through the passage are really going to help you to stay organized and hopefully understand what's going on. So this is actually one of the free passages on the Khan Academy, I'm going to link them in the description below. This one is called Reflections on Leaving Facebook, and as I go through, I'm going to be talking about what I was thinking about as I was reading the passage. So starting from the very first sentence, the author makes the assertion that they have left Facebook. Now in my head, what I'm thinking is first of all, why have they left Facebook? And then also, how did they feel or what were the consequences of having left the platform? Because that's what the article is going to be about. The author then goes on to say that after having left the platform, the world was still spinning on its axis, and this shows me that they don't actually feel too much remorse about having left the platform at all, i.e. nothing has really changed for them. They do, however, go on to say that Facebook's sinister prediction of their friends having missed them does come up, and the word sinister to me really stands out, so I take this and put it into the whole author insight section of my notes. To me, the big takeaways from this paragraph seem to be that they left Facebook and nothing really bad happened, although their friends do miss them and people want to know why they left. And the author does express a sinister nature of Facebook, which might give us a clue as to what they actually feel about it. At this point, I move on to the next paragraph, which really starts to get into why the author left Facebook in the first place, and you can really see a few things that stand out right away. The first thing being that the author does say that the issue of privacy does come up to them as one of the reasons why they were concerned about the platform in the beginning. However, they also go on to say that this is not the primary reason as to why they left. And in my head, this tells me that although this may be a supporting detail, this shouldn't really be focused on too much as the actual central thesis of this article. By hardly spending any time on the issue of privacy, this seems to be telling me that the author isn't actually going to be getting too much into it and therefore this might be just a little bit of misdirection or a very small supporting detail that may or may not come into play later. So I'll definitely start in my notes but not really spend too much time on it. Instead, what the author then goes on to talk about is the issue of online profiles and one's own identity on public platforms like Facebook. The next major argument that really stands out to me from the author is that the online avatar isn't identical to people at all, and therefore any of the interactions that you might be having online are not between a person and another person, but rather between your avatar and another avatar. And to me, this really suggests that the author is hinting at a depersonalization of any interactions that happen on social platforms like Facebook or others. Any interaction between two avatars is not representative of interactions between people in the eyes of the author of this passage, and therefore, because the author's already identified that this is the major reason for them having left the platform in the beginning, I can next make the assumption that this is something that the author really does not care for and might actually think negatively of. I'll have made very quick notes of everything that I just talked about, but maybe only in a very few amount of words, because truthfully, I don't even go on to read these notes later, it's just so I could keep track of everything that I'm thinking about as I proceed through the passage. At about 2 minutes and 40 seconds in, I'm finally on the third paragraph, which is pretty characteristic of me because I usually tend to read passages only once all the way through and then maybe just go back and look at my notes or briefly skim the other paragraphs uh, back and forth if I need to look for specific details. 
In my mind, it's always better to actually understand the passage by taking the time and reading it all the way through on the very first attempt, because if you just skim through it very quickly and have to go back four or five more times, it's going to make things a lot more complicated, and the general ideas of the passage might actually come out a little bit more fragmented when you're trying to remember things for yourself. In paragraph number three, the author places a very heavy emphasis on voyeurism, which I'll be sure to go ahead and reflect in my notes. What's even more important though is that they then go on to say that the main issue with voyeurism is not for the people who are being watched, but rather for the people that are doing the watching. And again, this traces back to an earlier supporting detail of when the author was talking about their major concern not being that of privacy. The main point of paragraph 3 is actually summarized by the author in the final sentence where they say that it is the watcher, not the watched, who suffers the most from this interaction. And this is supported earlier on in the passage by two other sentences that give examples of why the author believes this to be the case. And finally, at the 3 minute and 50 second mark, I'm ready to move on to the last paragraph, and this is in keeping with my time schedule where I usually finish my readings within 5 to 6 minutes. This leaves me with enough time at the end to finally get around to the questions. The author begins this paragraph by again commenting on the concept of voyeurism, but then also makes reference to the actual relationships formed on Facebook itself. They double down on their opinion that relationships on Facebook cannot actually be relationships in the true sense of the word by supporting it with the fact that people could access your photos on Facebook who aren't actually your friends at all. And in that case, there is no actual interaction between two individuals or their avatars on Facebook. The word uncomfortable also stands out to me as one of those words where the author is hinting at how they actually feel, so I'll be sure to definitely add this to my notes as well. Finally, the author concludes this passage by commenting that we are in danger of becoming voyeurs ourselves in some sort of an unhealthy relationship with other people and their avatars as a result of being on Facebook. This time, the author makes direct reference to relationships on Facebook being inauthentic, and by using the word somnambulist, it appears to me that he seems to be referencing sleepwalking. The direct connection being that we could actually do harm to ourselves according to the author even if we didn't know what it was that we're doing. And to me, this makes it seem like this is the reason why the author has decided to get rid of their Facebook profile. So at this point in time, I'll now have finished my initial and major revision of the passage as well as having taken all of my notes that I'll go ahead and put up on screen now. What you should notice from my notes is that there's not actually a lot of stuff that I have written other than some placeholders to understand what the passage was trying to say as I went through. Like I was saying before, I've tried to make reference to specific specific words that the author has used in the passage in order to really help me understand how they felt about what they were trying to say as well. And normally, before I'll start the questions, I'll actually take an additional 20 to 30 seconds to do a final review of my notes in order to make sure that I've actually understood the passage at a level that I'm comfortable with before I start doing the questions. So at the 5 minute and 30 second mark, I moved on to the questions, and just a quick spoiler alert guys, I didn't get them all right, but 5 out of 6 isn't that bad for someone who hasn't done this professionally in a while. The very first question was, which of the following passage assertions does the author present as evidence that Facebook users do not have authentic social interactions? Now, I'm not going to do an in-depth breakdown for every single question as to why certain answers were wrong and certain answers were right, because that would just take way too much time, and the Khan Academy actually does it on their website already, if you just go ahead and select the explain your answer or get a hint for each of the questions. Instead, what I'm going to do is just give you one answer that I actually got right and the one that I got wrong, and then I'll show you guys my final score at the end. But let's quickly explain why each of the three other options here were wrong and why option A was correct. So I always read the potential option choices alphabetically, and starting with answer a, it was, it is possible to see the photo albums of users who are not friends. Now this was specifically mentioned by the author in an earlier passage and seems to support why authentic social interactions are not possible on Facebook. The author actually mentions this directly in paragraph 4. Because other people who aren't your friends can see your pictures on Facebook according to the author, then the act of looking at pictures, which is an interaction, can be seen as inauthentic. According to the author, this would actually be an act of voyeurism as opposed to an authentic interaction. Now even though I actually thought that this was the answer after I read this question stem, I still kept going and looked at the rest of the potential answers as well. And this is because in cars, sometimes just because one answer is right, as confusing as it could be, there are often times where there is a more correct answer. However, this wasn't the case in this particular instance. Option B is wrong because privacy was never the primary concern with the author at all. And also, in paragraph 2, they also mention that people do have the right to choose what gets posted on their profile versus what doesn't. So in my mind, I'll have crossed out option B. Moving on to option C, this one really just didn't sound right at all. Just because users gather information about other users, this doesn't actually comment on the authenticity of relationships. After all, friends could gather lots of information from other friends by direct conversations and interactions with them, not just on Facebook. Now, option D, in my opinion, is really 
really just there for misdirection to throw you off from your line of thinking. This actually was brought up in the passage, specifically in paragraph one, which is why I think that they're just trying to tie you in with something that you have seen before. However, the fact that the author received lots of messages from his Facebook friends after he left doesn't prove that the relationships weren't authentic. Now fast forwarding to question three, this was actually the one that I got wrong, and let me just go ahead and explain my reasoning and what to do when you actually get one of these questions wrong in your practice. The question reads as follows, the passage suggests that the author would least likely opt to become an online user on which of the following? So even before I looked at the potential option choices, what I knew is that the author would not want to join any website that had number one, inauthentic relationships, and two, pieces of information that were presented without any means of verification. So once again, I started going through my option choices alphabetically. A was a chat room where political topics are debated. Now I thought about this one for a little bit, and the reason why I thought this could have been the answer is because in a chat room, it's basically two people having a conversation where you can't see the other person sitting in front of you, and therefore you can't actually know who you're speaking to or what credentials they have. Because political topics are also highly opinionated in the majority of conversations, I also thought that this could be an example of an inauthentic interaction as opposed to a conversation involving something proven, like a science. Ultimately though, I did go with option choice C because I thought that a professional networking site where people post their resumes was similar enough to Facebook in the aspect where people could post inauthentic resumes and therefore you just be boasting about yourself without actually having a face-to-face -face interaction with someone else. This to me was reminiscent of a person's avatar on Facebook not necessarily being represented representative of who they are or how they act in real life. Unfortunately though, I did get this question wrong, and then you always kick yourself when it was really the first answer that you should have chose instead of the one that you actually went with. But what's important is that when you get one of these questions wrong, always go and check the explanation provided by the textbook, or in this case the website, to see why the actual answer was different than the one that you chose. All right, guys, and I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. If you liked it, if it helped you out, feel free to smash that like button. Here's the proof showing that I actually did get one wrong on the test. Um, but other than that, I got to get back to studying now. So we'll see you guys all in the next one. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Everyone remember to keep working hard, keep studying hard, keep having fun. Good luck on your MCAT, and we'll see you guys soon. Everyone take it easy.